Holy Spirit dwell in me and touch my eyes that I might see all your goodness, grace, and power stay beside me every hour. Be my drink, be my living bread, and keep me sheltered, keep me fed. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, dwell in me. And Holy Spirit, comfort me, and let my heart be one with thee. And when I'm worried, soothe my mind, and let me sweet contentment find. And may I run this wicked race, and filled by your amazing grace, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, comfort me. And Holy Spirit, rescue me, and set my soul completely free. And beside Jordan make my bed And in God's bosom lay my head Let me live in a brand new place And see my Savior's blessed face And Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit Rescue me. Amen. We have one more after which we have scripture reading and prayer. Very first page of my favorite songs of the supplement book. This one here. As soon as you open it, it's right there. You don't know where it is. You probably know it anyway. I keep falling in love with him. Amen. 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 It's really a blessing to love God, ain't it? And, and, and we are a blessed people that he loves us. Loves us enough to send that ultimate sacrifice in his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. He did nothing wrong. But he came down here and wronged and righted all our wrongs, right? I keep falling in love with him. I keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. And I keep falling in love with him, yes, over and over and over and over again and he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by oh what a love between my savior and i i keep falling in love with him yes over and over and over and over again and he keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. My God keeps cleansing me over and over and over and over and over again. And he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Savior and I. I keep falling in love with him. Yes, over and over and over and over again. And he keeps 
blessing me over and over and over and over and over again my god keeps blessing me over and over and over and over and over again and he gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by oh what a love between my savior and i i keep falling in love with him yes over and over and over and over again amen let us all be standing for scripture reading and prayer morning metro morning. our scripture will be coming from matthews 14th chapter 22nd verse through the 32nd verse when you get there say amen and if you're still looking, say amen. <laughs> Matthews 14, chapter, <clears throat> 22nd verse through the 32nd verse. And it reads as, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go before him unto the other side. While he sent the multitudes away, and when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, and for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if thou be, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. <laughs> and when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, and he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, Art thou of little faith? Wherefore this thou doubt. And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. May the Lord have the blessing and the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Amen. Good morning, Metro. As we prepare for uh, this worship service, let us go to our Father in prayer. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we approach your throne of grace, Father, with humility, with repentance, with all of the worries that we have in front of us, Father, uh, behind us, so we can focus on you, we can focus on your word, and Father, we can partake in that, that throne of grace, not taking our eyes off of you, Father. We don't want to sink. We want to grow. We want to gain from uh, Brother Middlebrook uh, and his uh, teaching, Father God, tools that we can apply to our lives. Father, we ask that you please be with him, that you, that you give him clearness of thought, clearness of speech, Father God, to just impart a portion of your word onto our hearts, Father God. We ask that you please watch over those who are uh, on the way here, Father, those who are also traveling, uh, those uh, of us in, in, in our congregation dealing with uh, law, family loss and, 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 and challenges on, on the, in the workplace and all of the, the, the distractions, Father God, that come from uh, the uh, 
trials that you present to us in our life. Father, we ask that you uh, watch over us, that you be merciful on us, Father God, as we uh, come to you in, in spirit and in truth and through song and in and, and prayer, uh, just putting you first, Father God, and letting you know that uh, we love you and that we, we need you, Father God. We need that, that, that comfort that comes in knowing that you are there right next to us in everything that we're dealing with. Father, we ask that you uh, be with every soul in this, uh, in this uh, house and, and that you uh, allow us to be able to uh, just focus on you. We love you so much and thank you so much for Jesus. And it's in his blessed name we pray. Amen. How many of y'all ready to hear the word this morning? How many of y'all need to hear the word this morning? I need to hear it. I need to hear it. Page 646 in your red book. Just a little talk with Jesus. Please stand with me on your feet. Those who want to, as we bring forth our minister, to hear that precious word from our Lord. Just a little talk with Jesus. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. And it bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above. And now just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. Now let us have a little talk with now let us tell them all about our, for he will hear our faintest cry, and he will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayerful yearning, as your heart to heaven is turning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. And sometimes my past seems dreary without a ray of cheer. And then the cloud of doubt may hide the light of day. And the mist of sin may rise and hide the starry skies. But just a little talk with Jesus clears the way. Now let us have a little talk with now let us tell them all about our for he will hear our faintest cry and he will answer by and by now when you feel a little prayerful yearning as your heart to heaven is turning you will find a little talk with jesus makes it right and I may have doubts and fears, and my eyes be filled with tears. But Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. And I go to him in prayer, and he knows my every care. And now just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Now let us tell them all about our For he will hear our faintest cry And he will answer by and by Now when you feel a little prayerful yearning As your heart to heaven is turning You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right Now let us have a little talk with Now let us tell them all about our for he will hear our faintest cry and he will answer by and by now when you feel a little prayerful yearning as your heart to heaven is turning you will find a little talk with jesus makes it right amen 
If you're visiting with us, we want you to know that you are God's honored guest. We're just happy to have you here. We hope, trust, and pray you'll enjoy the worship service. If you're not a child of God, we're begging and pleading with God that you'll fall out with the ways of the world and fall in love with Jesus Christ. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. Put him on in baptism. Walk out of here a brand new creature, something that you didn't come in here as. And if you're a member of the body of Christ and you've fallen short, this is the place for short people. You can ask God for forgiveness, and we'll pray for you, and God will do what he does best. Amen? Amen. And so we want to be mindful of the fact that we're here to worship God in spirit and in truth. We had our brother uh, read into our hearing so eloquently, brother, uh, uh, brother, 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 brother Franklin, yeah, brother Franklin, and we're thankful. I just like to say, brother, brother Franklin, for the way in which he read it. Amen. But, uh, but, uh, but I'm gonna preach to you this morning. There's a word. There's a word in this word of God out of this 66 books, and sometimes we've we've heard it over and over and over again. But uh, the beauty of it is, is that I think I asked this on Wednesday night. When you get finished. Preaching or teaching Jesus, what is it left for you to do? Continue to go back and preach Jesus Christ and him crucified all over again. Amen. Amen. If you have in your Bibles or you have your Bible, we had read into our hearing uh, out of the book of Matthew 14, 22 through 32. And in that particular text, there is a story. There is a story, and I'm just going to take a few of these scriptures beginning at verses 22, and then we're going to break these scriptures down and see if we can make them applicable to our everyday walk of life. Is that all right with you all? In verse number 22, the Bible says this unto us. Matthew, being the writer, wrote, he said, And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to go get into a ship. But he didn't just want them to get into a ship and sit there. He said, get into a ship and go before him to the other side. And he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. I tell all of us in here, find your mountain. And when the evening was come, he was there all by himself. Every now and then, you need some me time. It's so a me time, just me and Jesus, amen? And, and, and you need to understand it. Know what the Bible says in verse 24, but the ship after a certain period of time uh, was now in the midst, it was in the midst of the sea. Uh, many of us here uh, have come from our early stages of life, and now we are what they call middle age. I'm too young for that, but I'm not old enough for that. I'm right here in the middle. Y'all here with me? If y'all push me, I'll preach. I promise you I will. Uh, and they were there in the, in the midst of the sea. And, 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 and while they was in the midst of the sea, uh, things were happening. Uh, they were in the ship, but the ship was being tossed with the waves of the sea. And isn't it amazing how what we read in this book called the Bible, we can find in real, uh, let me just say in the realities of life. Anybody in here ever had some waves of life just toss you to and to and fro? You find yourself, you're here and you're there and you're, you, 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 you're not close enough to say, let me get off right here. And you're, you're, not, you're, not, you're, not, you're too far out to say, hey, you know what, I, I can't go back. I got to just ride it out here in the, in the midst of the sea. Thank you, Jesus. Well, here's where they are. They're in the middle of the sea. There's nothing there but water. I didn't say they were on a lake. They were on the sea. And there's nothing there but water. And the waves begin to get rough. Sometimes in life, the waves, y'all talk like y'all done lived a little while up in here. The, 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 the waves got, got a little, little rough. And it was the fourth watch. Is that in your Bible? It was in the fourth watch of the night. Anywhere that was between 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock. 3 o'clock and 6 o'clock. It's dark. And they're out there in the middle. 
with some waves. Can't get to dry ground because we're in the middle of it. Anybody ever wanted to be rescued from the middle? I figured I better give y'all my sermon title right, right about here. Yeah, write it down. Write it down. Or remember this. My sermon title is in form of a question. What are you afraid of? What, 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 are, you, what are you afraid of? Here they are. They're in the midst of the sea. Three and six o'clock. And all the bands of life have broken. Everything is, 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 is broken around them. And, and, and the Bible says unto us that, that Jesus, y'all man, Jesus, he comes walking. Not by the sea. He didn't come walking standing in a ship. He came walking on the sea. He's walking. Y'all get it. He's walking on the sea. Oh, wow. This, this is a. He's walking on the sea. And the very people that are familiar with him and that he's familiar with sees him walking. But they're afraid because they think it's a ghost. They can't recognize him because right now they're in the midst of the sea and the winds are raging and they're afraid. And so they, they can't identify who he is. And they think it's a ghost. And the Lord says, fear not, for it is I. What is the Lord trying to tell us today? He's trying to tell us in a nice way, what are you afraid of? You, you have no need to be afraid of anything contrary that comes your way because I have everything under control. You may not understand it. You may not know it. You may not see it, but I got everything under control. But you got one. You got one. And we talk about, you know, he, he was always in trouble. And, and Jesus says, be not afraid of this. It is I, but, but Peter says, Lord, if, I'm not going to keep y'all long today. He said, Lord, if it be you. Brother Tony, if it be you. Brother, if it be you. My brother, if it be you. If it be you. Peter says, bid me. Peter said, listen, I need some confirmation up in here. P Peter said, listen, I'm not playing. Peter, Peter's just like you and I. Peter said, Lord, if it be you, confirm it for me. Let me know it's really you. I need, I need some proof. And a whole lot of us sitting up in here now are children of God saying, I need some proof because I'm going through some stuff. And he says to Peter, he says, Peter, Peter says, if it be your bid me, I ain't thinking about the other 11 on the boat. Peter said, yeah, 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 yeah. Peter, Peter said, I ain't thinking about the rest of them on the boat. He said, if it be you, bid me to come. I ain't started preaching yet. Jesus says, come. Is that in your Bible? He says, come, right? Whenever the Lord bids you to come, because you need a confirmation, and he gives you an assurance that it is he and not someone else, he never told you that you weren't going to experience some things as you're on your way unto the Lord, because remember, they're on their way over to the other side.
He never told them that they were not going to be exposed to some difficulties. He never told them that the winds were going to raise in life. He never told them that it was going to get boisterous. But he said, Peter, you want to come? Come. So Peter steps outside of the ship. And what Peter begins to do when he steps outside of the ship, because now he has a confirmation that's fresh in his mind. He has a confirmation that it is my Lord and my Savior. He has a confirmation that he has a word that God has told him, Jesus told him, come. And based on the word, Peter decides that I'm going to obey the word and I'm going to come unto him. So he steps out. And he starts. He starts walking. On the water. But before he steps out, he's got to step out of the ship. But he's got to hold on to something because the winds are boisterous. The winds are strong. The waves are strong. But when he gets down, imagine if you will, when he gets down to where he's able to get with the water and his foot hit the water. I said his foot. I didn't say his head. I didn't say his neck. I didn't say his waist. I said his foot hit the water. And he started walking to Jesus. Y'all heard this story before, haven't you? He started walking to Jesus. But, but something happened along the way. Isn't it amazing how in life everything can be going just fine and all of a sudden something can happen along the way? You, 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 you're doing fine one minute, and the next minute, something has happened. And, and, and what happened was, the Bible said, the wind, it got boisterous out there. And, and when it got boisterous out there, it got rough. Peter became fearful of what he began to see. And when Peter began to get fearful of what he see, seen, which was, he took his eyes off Jesus. And when he took his eyes off Jesus, Peter began to sink. I came to tell us that too often we remove our eyes off Jesus Christ. But if we want to do what Jesus did, we got to keep our eyes on top of Jesus. We are able to do the impossible. But in order to do the impossible, you got to trust the one that has given you his word. Peter had the word. And the word said, come. Peter lost his faith in the word of God. Too many people in the church are losing their faith in the word of God. You got to hold on to the word. Jesus said heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will stand forever. Even the word that says come will remain. He never told us what we were going to experience in this thing called life. But he tells us to come. And when he tells us to come, the thing that Jesus was walking on top of, when Peter had faith, he had the ability to walk on the same thing that Jesus walked on. And if we ever really want to be victorious in this Christian life, we have to learn that we're going to have to let go of some stuff. You have to learn, I got to let go and let God do what God does best. And if God said it, I better not have any better sense than to do and trust that God has it from the beginning all the way unto the end. Peter's, Peter's out. Peter's out. And he's doing fine for a moment. Everybody is doing fine when the sun is shining. And there's a light, brisk little wind. And ain't a cloud in the air anywhere. Everybody's good. Everything is good. But as soon as the waves begin to rock and to roll our ship, we turn around and we ask the Lord, Lord, is it you? And when the Lord gives us that, that confirmation, it is I. But not only am I going to give you a confirmation, I came to tell us that the Lord also gives us an invitation. And he gives us an invitation for all of us to come. And when we decide that we're going to come to Jesus, I don't care what goes on in your life, being a member of the body of Christ, whatever befalls you, don't you ever give up on the word of Jesus Christ. He's already told us that I'll be with you no matter what you go through, even until the end, even until the end of death. And we have to understand and know that we have to let go of what the world has called us and what the devil wants us to hold on to and hold on to the word of God because it's the word of God that will get us through the storms of life and that will allow us to conquer that which is trying to conquer 
us. Satan is always trying to get us to take our focus off him. That's why we get caught up in petty little things. And when you get caught up in petty little things, the devil says, I got you now because your focus is not on the one who told you to come. He's already guaranteed you the assurance that we're going to make it over on the other side. But on our way to the other side, he never told us what all we were going to encounter. On the other side, on our way to the other side, you're going to go through some stuff. But while you're going through some stuff, you need to allow the word of God to burn in your ear and in your heart to help you continue to stand up. That even when the devil is trying to push you down, you say, devil, you can push me down all you want to, but you can't push me out of my faith because I'm going to remain on that because my faith is what's allowing me to walk on top of this water. And if Jesus said it, I ain't got no better sense than to believe it. Sometimes you ask Christians, what, what happened? I, I, just, I just gave up. I just, I just gave up. When you say you gave up and if you were a real child of God, what you did was you gave up on God. You gave up on the word of God. But isn't God good? <laughs> Has he ever brought you through some tough stuff? See, I'm no longer in the middle. I, I, I'm not at that age where I'm in the middle. Now I'm, I'm, I'm on the other side, you know. I, I can look back when I was in the middle, but I'm no longer there no more based on the numbers that they say. But, 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 but I'm, in the, I, I'm in the right place with Jesus Christ. See, the only thing that matters is that when you're in the right place and in the right relationship with Jesus Christ, you can do what Jesus said he could do. You can do. Some of us doubt whether we measure up to the standards of man who is no more than we are. He's flesh and blood. And sometimes we, we doubt whether or not we can accomplish the things that the Lord has called us to accomplish, the things that God has purposed in our life, the plans that God has for us in our life. And what I've learned about God is that you never get too old for God to use you. And every now and then, you get put in a, in a laboratory and in the laboratory of life, guess what happens? Your faith gets tested. And when your faith gets tested, that's not the time to jump off the ship with Jesus. That's time to stay on the water with Jesus. The ship is still on the water. Jesus is still on the water. Peter was walking on the water. But something happened along the way. While he was being tested, he took his focus off Jesus. And when you take your focus off Jesus, you take your faith out of Jesus. And you begin to fear. Fear is false evidence that appears real. It looks like it can harm me. But when the Lord has you in the grip of his grace, whatever comes your way can't harm you because the Lord is there to always help you. To see you through whatever you're going through. So he cries another cry. He says, Lord, he said, Lord, save me. Now watch the text. Watch the text. Peter asked while he was on the ship with the other 11. He says, Lord, if it's you, bid me. Peter wasn't concerned about the rest of them coming, right? Because faith is a personal thing. We can walk together, but how can we walk together? Stand up, Bishop. Come on up here, Doc. Let's lock up like y'all did in the army. Let's go over here to the other side. Y'all see our step? Y'all see our step? We walking together, right? Amen. All right, now. Now, Bishop, we over here now. You going back on the other side. And take your seat. <laughs> what did we just do? What did we do? I can't hear y'all. Y'all saw that, right? Y'all see how we did it? Were we in step? We have to be more in step with Christ and his word 
then we have to be in step in our own natural human walk. Peter said, Lord, if it's you, be it me. Peter didn't ask to be it us because he understood that this is between me and Jesus. When Peter started sinking, he didn't cry and say, Lord, save us. He cried out and said, save who? It's a personal thing. It's a personal thing. I came to tell you it's personal. Too often in life, we think oftentimes that our faith is based on how and what others do. Your faith is based upon what you do with the Lord because he's your Lord and your Savior. It's a personal thing. And being a personal thing, we have to be mindful of the fact that if we ever want to accomplish what the Lord wants us to accomplish, we have to be in step with Jesus Christ. And whenever we get out of step with Jesus Christ, we lose ground and we start to sink. Sometimes you can start sinking and don't even know that you started to sink because your sinking is at a slow, gradual pace. But when you start to drifting back from God, when you start to drawing up from God, when you stop serving God, when you stop loving what God loves, when you stop loving who God loves, when you stop treating people right, when you stop lifting people up and start tearing people down, what you started to do is that you started to sink. And there's a cry that needs to go out when you're able to identify your spiritual condition. You need to say, Lord, save me. Why do I need you to save me? Because I'm the one with the problem. See, the problem wasn't with Jesus Christ. He still remained Jesus Christ. His word was still bond. Now, he already knew that, Peter, you know what? If you want to make it over here, you got to do exactly what I said do. I told you to come. This is a test. This is only a test. For the next few minutes, you're going to go through some stuff that's going to try your faith and that's going to allow you an opportunity to either glorify God or to give the devil some praise and say, look what I stole from you. What are you afraid of? We are children of God, and it ain't nothing we can't do. We ask in prayer, but we doubt in fear. We ask in prayer, but we doubt in question. If you're going to ask God for it, believe that God's going to do it. So what if you got some tests you got to go through? You need to go through the test so that somebody else can see that in spite of everything, my God is a God that's faithful and just, and I know that I can count on him when I can't even count on myself. Peter says, save me. But what I love about it, it's such a simple story, but it's a powerful and a profound story. It doesn't matter what anybody else does when the Lord calls you you need to respond and guess what you need to respond quicker than right now and faster than in a hurry you need to respond immediately because right now immediately is the time that you need to be saved see we have to do what we need to do right here and right now some of us as I said earlier are dealing with some things we don't know how it's going to come out. We don't know what to do. We don't know what to think. But guess what? Just remain faithful unto God. God has already told us that regardless of what we go through, he'll never leave us, nor will he ever forsake us. We are children of the most high God. We are the body of Christ. We are the church of Christ. We have the promises of Christ. We have the salvation of Christ. We have the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us, and we have the spirit of God. Now we need to grab a hold to the word of God and let not the devil snatch it out of our hearts. It costs heaven too much. We need to understand that at such a high cost, how can we afford to trifle with what has been given unto us, which is a four-letter word, faith. Faith in the creator who created the heavens and the earth. Faith in the one who's going to come back in the clouds and in the air. Faith in the one who tells us that we have an eternal home in glory. Faith in the one where we know we're going to receive a crown of life. Faith in the one who walks with us each and every day, especially if we're willing to walk with him. But his love runs so deep that even when we falter, even when we fail, he's still there with outstretched arms allowing us to come unto him and to get what it is that we stand in need of. And as soon as he cried out, Lord, save me. See, when it's personal, it ain't no them. When it's personal. See, my fire that I'm in may not be your fire. And so your fire is just as important to you as my fire is to me. Y'all hear what I'm saying? But, but aren't you glad that we serve a God who's able to put out fires, who's able to quiet storms, 
who's able to walk on waters, who shows us that you can do what I do as long as you trust and believe in me. Nothing is impossible. The, all things are possible with God, even the things that are impossible with man. They're possible with God. But we have to learn that, guess what? If God said it, I believe I can do it. And even if the winds begin to blow and the times get boisterous, I'm still going to remain faithful to the word of God because it's the word of God that's going to carry me from some, from nowhere to somewhere. So what am I going to do? I'm going to trust in the Lord with all of my heart. I'm not going to lean to my own understanding, but I'm going to acknowledge him in all my ways. What am I going to do? I'm going to ask God, God, you help me that I might be able to help somebody else. But see, when it's personal, it starts at home. But after it becomes personal and you become united with Christ, you use what God has given you to spread it out and to share with somebody else who stands in need of your blessings, who stands in need of his blessing. They need your experience, but they need your experience, and they need you to help them be encouraged in this faith walk. Because if not, you find yourself sinking. Sometimes you can sink in a way you don't even know that you're sinking. Can I just be real with y'all? You start missing church. You start saying, oh, why are we doing that? You stop doing and serving like you used to. You used to serve God with a fervor, but now it's going to let somebody else do it. You say, well, they're going to do it anyway. You start saying, well, they're going to do it anyway. I don't serve God because somebody else served God. <clears throat> I serve God because God has been better to me than I've been better to my own self. And I know he's been better to me than I've been to him. I serve God because I love him. But every now and then I fall and I make a mistake and I get fragile. But thanks be to God, I can cry and say, Lord, save me. Fear. Fear. What do you need to be afraid of? Why are you afraid? Well, what are you afraid of? What is it that you have not let go of? I would give God all of me, but I'm afraid. Somebody will take advantage of me. Can't nobody take advantage of you when you belong to God? The water couldn't do Peter no harm when the wind's boisterous as long as Peter stayed focused on Jesus Christ and believed what Jesus said. Nothing could hurt him. Nothing could harm him. But when he stopped trusting in God, he started to sink. And have you ever noticed that spiritually you don't start sinking all at once? A lot of times you go little by little by little by little. And Satan says, you know what? Don't eat the whole elephant at once. Take him chunk by chunk. That way he's not or she's not so aware of what's actually happening. So we look at our spiritual lives and say, where am I in my spiritual walk? And I wasn't feeling it this morning. But on Monday morning, we get up and go to work. I, I, I wasn't feeling it this morning, this afternoon, but, 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 but we'll go and watch a TV show, but we won't get on the prayer line. Boy, it's quiet up in here. See, I'm preaching because we're going somewhere. We're on our way over on the other side. And over on the other side, we can't stand the risk of saying, you know what, I'm going to look here, I'm going to look there, I'm going to doubt, I'm going to do this and that. No, no, we can't afford to do that because we never know where we may get caught at in the middle looking off at something else. As long as we look at the light and follow the light, we can walk in the light as he's in the light. And we can have fellowship one with another. Thank y'all for these lights. Fellowship one with another. And then we know that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness. But if we take our eyes off and we let go of the the Word of God. That's why it's so important, church, that we get in the Word of God and we do some studying. We, we, we get into the Word of God because whatever we put in us, that's what's coming out. And, and the more stuff that we put in us that's not godly, the more stuff that will come out of us that's ungodly. There's nothing censored anymore in this world we live in. Everything is freestyle. Have it your own way. But when we allow the word of God to dwell in us, richly teaching and admonishing us, we won't move from the word. We say it might be fun, it might be enjoyable, but I can't do it because I got somewhere where I'm going. I'm going to the other side. And in the midst of it, I can't afford to lose this one. I, I got a trophy that I'm trying to get. And I'm not concerned whether or not everybody else turns away from it. I'm going to get my trophy. 
that only this righteous judge can give. So I'm going to prepare to close. Is that all right with y'all? I said I'm going to prepare to close. I got a whole lot left in me, but I'm going to prepare to close. Don't do that. Eh, just tell me. Just tell me if it's you, bid me to come. I'm going to keep coming with some scriptures in the Bible. <laughs> See, we can't allow the, the, the external things to upset our internal relationship with God. We may face challenging situations that cause us to fear, whether it's uncertainty, whether it's doubt, or even the unknown. But in those moments, Jesus calls out to us saying, take courage. What are you afraid of? Jesus says here, take courage and don't be afraid. Remember, he is, Jesus is our source of strength. He's our source of comfort amidst our fears. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 and 2 Corinthians 1 and 3. Jesus said, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. Paul said to the letter, in the letter of uh, 2 Corinthians 1 and 3, he's the God of not some comfort. He's the God of all comfort. And we need to learn that we can take comfort in the Lord even in the midst of trials and tribulations, even in the midst of storms, even in the midst of heartaches and hardships. Take consolation in the fact that he is my God. And he says, come. We fix our eyes on Jesus and we trust him. We can walk on water, metaphorically speaking. But we can walk through these things and these challenges of life, not being victims, but being victors because of who we belong to. We're able to navigate through life storms with confidence, knowing that Jesus is always with us. Amen, somebody. Even when we fear and start to sink, Jesus is there to lift us up and to restore us back into the faith. Every now and then, we need to say, Lord, I need to confess my faults and realize and know that he's faithful and just to forgive me of all of my shortcomings. When you doubt Jesus, that's a sin. You have to trust God, not sometime, but you got to trust God all the time. So you don't just trust God when you see him. You got to trust God when you can't see him. You got to trust God when you don't understand because it's when you don't understand that God's doing some of his best work to bring you to a, a higher peak and a higher level of understanding faith. We got to learn that Jesus is the answer. He says, fear not, Lord. The Lord is with you. Do not let fear hold you back from stepping out in faith and following after Jesus Christ. I'm getting to this point where I'm getting ready to close, and I say, finally, we have to trust if you will, Metro, in his promises, we have to believe in his power and we have faith that will guide you through the storms and the waters of life. But may we always remember the words of Jesus in Matthew 6 and 33. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto you. But I'm so grateful that even when it seems like I'm sinking and I'm going down in life that I can look to Jesus and know that Jesus has a master plan and the master plan is found in Romans 8 and 28. It lets me know that all things work together for the good for them that love God uh, according to his will and his way and his appearing. Uh, I'm glad that I can find uh, when I look in the book of Hebrews 10 and 23, the Bible encourages me and encourages you to take hold of the word of God uh, in the midst of stormy trials and tribulations uh, when we're out on the seas of life uh, and the wind is starting to beat us down. Uh, we have to learn and know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Hebrew writer said uh, let us hold uh, our fast unswaveringly uh, to uh, the hope uh, uh, professed for us who is promised faithful. He lets us know that let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. Brother Middlebrook, where do you stand? I'm saying that we find uh, in this picture book of the situation uh, with the disciples and Jesus on the water. Things got rougher on their way to the other side. Uh, they couldn't do anything about it. Uh, these men uh, had been out uh, on the sea before, uh, but nothing had happened like this before. Uh, this time they're out uh, and they're on the sea. Uh, and I came to tell you, maybe you're going through something that you ain't never been through before. Maybe you're experiencing some things uh, that keep on knocking you down, uh, that keep on causing you to want to look somewhere else. But I came by to tell you, 
don't trust in the devil. Trust in Jesus Christ. Uh, the devil will give you something that looks like it's from God, but it's really not from God. Uh, we got to learn to hold fast to the word of God uh, and don't let it go. Uh, if you got to do it all by yourself, don't give up and say, hey, I ain't doing it because ain't nobody else doing it. You're not doing it for somebody else. You're doing it for God. And when you're doing it for God, you get the blessing God intended for you. Peter said, I ain't worried about them. He said, Lord, bid me. Y'all remember, what was it, truth or consequences? Was that what it was? Truthfully speaking, how many of us in here really says, you know what? At the end of the day, I want the Lord to save me. I, I want the rest of y'all saved, but I really, I want the Lord to just, you know what? And, and Brother Blue, you say, well, listen, Pam, Pam said, yeah, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 this, I'm, you say, Pam, we, we, we ain't gonna, we ain't gonna fight this fight to go to heaven no more. Pam said, Pete, you know I love you, but I'm gonna keep on fighting. You gonna go by yourself? <clears throat> but Franklin, you tell Sister Franklin, Sister Franklin, I don't want to follow you with Jesus no more. I want to have some fun. I want to go on a medical leave, spiritual medical leave. I just want to do what I'm going to do. I'm just here to tell you, well, you're going to do what you're going to do, but I'm going on with Jesus. You know why? Because it's personal. It ain't that I don't love you, but it's personal. And, and what I want, you might not want. But just because you don't want it don't mean that I don't want it. So I'm going to do everything that I can do to get what God is calling me to. And, and sometimes that means you got to leave some folk. <laughs> and, and can I tell y'all something? When the Lord calls you to obey the glorious gospel and you accept Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you know what he's calling you to do? To leave that old world and old folk that will drag you behind you. Why? Because you're walking into something new. Let me, let me, let me hurry. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 1 and 20, he says this, for no matter how many promises God has made, Peter, come on. Peter, come. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes did y'all get that? God has promised to be with us always, even to the end. Now, don't go out here and do something stupid and say, well, God, you know what you promised? He didn't say I was going to be with you in this stupid stuff. Peter lost his mind for a minute. But he regained consciousness enough to see his condition and say, Lord, save me. It's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of being saved. Now, all of us know where we need to be saved from. And all of us know now who we need to be saved by. He said, take courage and don't, don't be afraid. God loves you too much to let you go. Y'all didn't hear what I said? I said, God loves you too much to let you go. Watch the text. Watch the text. Watch the text. Peter lost his faith and started to sink. But aren't you glad that God loves you too much that when you cry out to God, God will grab a hold of you? He reached out and saved Peter. We have to learn that the Lord, he loves you too much to let us go. And all we have to do is come back to the Lord, humbleness of heart and sincerity, asking the Lord, the Lord, save me. You can have issues in your life that nobody know about but you and God. But when you get honest and sincere and you decide to do what the Lord said, come, 
and you say, Lord, save me, he'll reach out and grab you. He'll give you what you need so he can take you where you need to be. But I'm mindful of the fact that he loves me too much and he loves you too much to let you go. When you are going through your stuff, and all of us going to go through some stuff, and you learn that ain't nobody's stuff more important than your stuff when you got some stuff and they got some stuff because you're a priority, as you see it. But they're a priority. But I came by to tell you that all of us are a priority before God. One's need is no greater than the other. We all have the same need. It's number one priority before God that all of us be saved. Y'all feeling me? See, God has a perfect picture for us. And we'll find all we need in the word of God. And that is take courage. There's somebody here today who needs to take courage. And say, I don't care what the end may be. I just know whatever the end is going to be, I just want to be in the hands of God who saved me. And so the Bible says in the book of Romans 8, 31 through 39, now if I give you these, we can hush. The Bible says in Romans 8, 31 through 39, I want you all to get some book chapter and some verse so you can see what the Bible says. Paul raises the question. He said, what then are we to say about these things? He said, if God be for us, who can be against us? It doesn't matter whether it's the winds or the storms or the boisterous things of life. We need to understand that if God be for us, no man, no woman, no boy and the girl, no matter what their position or their power may be, can be against us because God is for us. Uh, he didn't even spare his own son, uh, but he gave his son up for us. That lets us know that God loves me and that God loves you and he wants nothing but the best for us. Amen, somebody. Ah, how will he not also with him Grant unto us everything. If God gave his son for us, what makes you think that he won't give everything us to us? We have to stay focused on the fact that if the Lord told us to come, we need to trust in the fact that I might go through some trials and some tribulations, uh, some sickness and some pains, uh, some lonely days and some lonely nights, uh, some financial difficulties, cultures, but the Lord has told me to come and I know when I get to Jesus that everything is going to be all right. Uh, yeah, they're going to be all right. Uh, Ah, uh, he gave up his own son. Uh, he will not also with him. He must uh, grant us everything. If God gave his son, he'll give us anything. And then he says this here, because Satan wants to condemn us and Satan wants to charge us and he wants to blame us before God. He wants to do all that, but the Lord has fixed it in his word. I thank God for his word in Romans 8, 31 through 39, who can bring an accusation uh, against God's elect. Uh, Satan can say, see, he started to sink, but God said, that's all right. He started to sink, but he had enough sense to say, Lord, save me. Uh, I heard my child's cry, and I responded to his cry. Uh, he did not if you will, yeah. he did not give up on Peter. He allowed Peter to cry out uh, and then to give Peter what it was that he stood in need of. He's ready, willing, and able to give you and I what we stand in need of today, right here today. We need to understand and know that God is the one who justifies us. Uh, who is the one who uh, condemns us? It would be him, not man. Uh, Christ Jesus is the one who died for us. Uh, but even more, he's been raised from the dead. Uh, and because Peter, just like he began to sink and go down, uh, he was able to be lifted back up by the powerful hand uh, of the almighty God. Uh, the Lord God, Jesus Christ, uh, intercedes for us. And we asked the question, Paul asked in Romans 8 over there, who can separate us? from the love of God. Nobody, I came to tell you, nobody can separate us from the love of God. Now, I say this all the time. There'll be nobody in hell because God doesn't love them. They'll be in hell because they refuse to trust God's son, Jesus Christ, to be the savior of their souls. Uh, they refuse to trust the word of God. And so life, uh, when they refuse to trust them, they begin to sink down into the deep, deep pits of sin and doubt. Uh, they begin to back up from God. Uh, they begin to turn their face from God. They begin to trust man than they more than they trust God. They trust circumstances and situations uh, that look good, uh, uh, that look harmful, that are not harmful. They are only a test that God is trying to show us that I was with you in the beginning. I'll be with you all the way to the end. But you got to trust me. What are you afraid of? Can affliction or persecution Separate us from God, from God's love. Can famine, 
nakedness or danger of a sword separate us from the love of God? The Bible says, as it is written, because you were being put to death all day long, we are counted as sheep as for the slaughter. Ah, but I'm thankful to God that knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors. Uh, we are more than conquerors. Uh, I didn't hear that from man, but I heard it from the word of God. Uh, and I ain't got no better sense than to believe what the Lord said. Uh, I'm more than a conqueror. I may look like I'm weak. Uh, I may look like I'm fragile. I may look like I'm defeated. But I'm in Christ Jesus, uh, the king. Uh, I'm in Christ Jesus, my victory. I'm in Christ Jesus who allows me to know and allows me to understand that I'm more than a conqueror. I didn't just conquer. I took over everything. How did you do it? Because I took a hold of the word of God and I trusted in the word of God. When you know that, what are you afraid of? They might say, I'm not worried about which I'm too old to be concerned about what folks say. I know too much about you. I know too much about him for anybody to make me doubt him. They say, well, you know, they're they, they talking about you. I said, that's good. That means, you know what? I must be important. They realize they ain't wasting their time talking about me. I don't mind. And some people get all bent out and say, they're talking about me. That's what they're supposed to do. They talked about Jesus. Didn't Peter walk on water? Why did Peter walk on water? He walked on water because Jesus allowed him to walk on water. Why do you think they're talking about you? Because Jesus allowed them to talk about you. Why do you think that door didn't open? Jesus didn't let that door open. He didn't want you going through that door at that time. Why am I here? Because Jesus wants you right here, and I trust the fact that he got you here for a purpose. When am I going to move? When you ask the Lord to let you to move to come to him. And you put your full focus on him, then you can start moving. Maybe he has you at a railroad crossing because he knows that there's a train coming. And if the train is coming and the whistle is blowing, you ain't got no better sense than to still try to cross the track. So he knows how to say go. And he knows how to say stop. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? Really, what are you afraid of? What, 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 what's got you to where you can't let go? I, I can't let go. I, I refuse. You will never get all that God has in store for you until you learn how to let go of fears and let go of the things that are not from God, but grab a hold to the word of God and do like the psalmist said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee I'm, I'm closing how many is that now is that two right two that's three okay <clears throat> I, I'm almost done Paul says I'm persuaded y'all know what that means Paul says I'm, 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 I'm persuaded in other words Paul said I've, I've asked God to sanctify my spirit and to sanctify my mind, that I'm convinced that nothing can separate me from the love of God. Even Peter out on the water starting to sink, it couldn't separate him from the love of God. God's love is too rich, it's too strong, it's too powerful, it's too, it's too, it's too unlimited for us to even think that he would let us go. He said, listen, for I am persuaded that not even death, life, or angels or rulers, things present, things to come, hostile powers, heights, depths, or any other created thing will have the power to separate us from the love of God. That is, where is it at? It's in Christ Jesus. Jesus told Peter, I know your circumstances. That's why I told y'all to get in the boat. I told y'all to get in the boat and meet me over on the other side. Because it's on our way over to the other side that we encounter difficulties, we encounter trials and tribulations. And sometimes you can't call on family members. You can't call on friends. 
Sometimes you can't call on church members to pray for you all the time. Sometimes you got to say, first, I'm going to take it to Jesus Christ. We have to learn what Peter did in this book. Peter said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. Peter didn't say bid us to come because Peter was thinking about, listen, it's just me. They say he was the impetuous one, but sometimes you need an impetuous one in the group because the impetuous one in the group will be the one to inspire everybody else. And then when he began to sink after God had allowed him to accomplish that, which, he, which was impossible. God will allow you to go and do things that people nor even yourself ever thought you could accomplish. But you have to have your faith anchored in the word of God. Lady, that lady tell me, she said, well, Brother Middlebrook, I ain't too old. I said, I know you ain't too old. I'm inspired. You know, you 91 years old and you doing all that? Shoot, I'm around here complaining and I'm only 6'5". I said, shoot, I, I, from now on, I'm going to keep my complaints to myself. I'm going to give them to Jesus. I'm going to keep taking my turmeric. <laughs> keep taking my calcium. Keep taking my magnesium. Keep taking my vitamins. Stay away from the fatty food. Keep my blood pressure down. Keep my blood sugar down. Keep cholesterol down. And keep Jesus out front and say, thank you, Jesus. I refuse to drown in the stuff that Jesus told me I have the power to walk on top of. Come. Peter said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. Matthew 11, 28 through 30, Jesus says, come. Come where? Y'all know where he says come? He says, come unto me. That's personal. Remember I told y'all Peter was personal? He didn't say bid them. He didn't say, Lord, save them. The Lord is saying to us now, he's saying, come. Come where? Come unto me. Who? He's inviting everybody. All you that labor and heavy laden. He said, you know what? I, I want you to do what? Come. But then I want you to come, but I want you to take something because you're going to need something. He said, take my yoke. In other words, take my way upon you. And then I don't want you to just stop right there, but I want you to continue to learn of me. Because I want you to understand that even in difficult times, my yoke is easy, my way is easy, and my burden is light. But you got to understand that you can only fight this good fight of faith through faith in Christ Jesus. And he says, you know what, and I'll do something to you. He said, and I'll give you some rest for your soul. In other words, when you lay down at night, you can sleep. When you're going through trials and tribulations, you won't bust like a balloon. You, you, can, you can be at peace. You know why? Because you come to me and, and you're trusting in me to give you what you need, even in the rough times of life. He said, you know what? When everybody else is wondering how they're going to make it, you don't have to worry about how you're going to make it. You can use these bold, courageous words. I know the Lord will make a way somehow. When you're going through things that you don't understand, you, you can understand and know this because you, you, you've come and because you've taken my yoke and you're learning of me and you understand the things that I'm telling. You can understand, know that, that I said, if you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, I'll lift you up in due time. You just learn how to wait on the Lord. And when you learn how to wait on the Lord, the Lord will show up and show out. Amen, somebody. You, you learn how when you can't talk to nobody else, I can talk to God and tell him all about my troubles because just a little talk with Jesus and make it all right. Did you sing that song this morning, Brother Terry? Uh, yeah, he said just a little talk with Jesus would make it all right. Peter had just a little talk with Jesus. Lord, bid me to come. The Lord bid him to come. Peter says, Lord, save me. Just a little talk with Jesus. The book is right. The book is right. And there's too many people that's outside of Christ that need to know about Christ, and too many of us here in the body of Christ that need to know and understand that God's already got you fixed. Put your focus and put your faith in Christ, and don't let nothing disturb that. What is it that you're afraid of? Well, I should have asked for prayer. You know how many times I have heard that over my 40-plus years of being in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in Christ? I would have came, but, 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 but I, 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 I should have came. You should have came. There might be somebody here now saying, I should have came. I should have gone. You don't know what the next few minutes hold. You can choke on your slava sitting up here in worship service. 
You can be having some stuff on you, and you know, I need to ask for prayer. But you don't want to ask for prayer because I'm too proud. The devil speaks to our spirit. Don't ask for prayer because they're going to think something wrong. I don't care what you think. I want Jesus to know there's something wrong, and I need Jesus' help. And I want the saints of God to pray for me while I'm going through my stuff. We're members of one body. One body. I'll say this. I was at a funeral yesterday up in Lansing, Michigan, burying one of my family members. And while there, I'm looking, and I'm looking at all of my, not all of them, but a great majority of family members, young men, young women. And I hadn't seen a lot of them in, in a long time, and I didn't even recognize them. I said, hey, Oscar, how you doing, man? Say, oh, what? I'm Danny. I said, man, what? How old are you now? 46 years old. <laughs> but I'm looking. I'm looking at all that God has done through two people. He brought two people together. And what two people has done is they, they have reproduced by having children, grandchildren great-grandchildren, and great-great-grandchildren. Church, come here. Y'all know what God wants us to do? Reproduce. How do we do that? By sharing, living, and loving, and having the faith that God would have us to have and not fall out because the first time tragedy hits us, can I be honest with y'all? You know what we normally do? We fall away from the Lord. And that's the time we ought to be drawing closer to God. You need to be close to God so that whatever wind storms blow in your way, you can say, guess what? I'm going back to sleep because Jesus got this. But he's extended unto us an invitation right now that's saying, guess what? You, may, you will never have this Sunday again. Never have this Sunday here again. Once it's gone, it's gone. In other words, you will never have this moment to do what you need to do pertaining to your soul relationship or your relationship with God or even obeying the gospel today. You'll never have this moment again. And so the Lord told me to tell you all as I speak to myself. He says, you let them know that if they want to be saved, then they need to understand and know that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. He came from the portals of glory, stripped himself of all divinity, took on the rags of life, became as you and I, walked the sandy shores of Galilee, chose 12 men. One was a devil. He knows what it's like to be betrayed. Not only that, he allowed himself to turn himself over into the hands of some wicked men to crucify him because he loved us more than we love him. They crucified him on an old rugged cross and buried him in a borrowed tomb, but that couldn't keep him. You know why? Because love got him up. Because if he hadn't got up, he couldn't have saved us. But he loved us so much that he got up. Therefore, he wants the world to know that this is the son of God that God gave. God gave his beloved son. His son gave his life. We have to believe that he's the son of God. We have to learn that not only do we believe that, but we have to learn that we have to confess that. Confess Jesus to be the son of the living God. Our heart and our mouth must be in agreement. Romans 10, 9, and 10. We have to be in agreement with that. Then we must be willing to say, I'm going to turn from my ways, and I'm turning to God. Because it's rough out here. Do I have any witnesses up in here to know that this light, this light is rough up in here? It don't matter whether you get older. When you get older, you got more aches, you got more pains. You can have more money, but you, got more, you can't do everything you want to do. You know, you think you're young. I can do everything I want to do if I had this. Now when you get this here, you can't do all that. You need to change from your way of thinking to the thinking of God, that God is it. God is all I need. Then not only that, you need to learn that, you know what, I, I, that, that's called repentance. Then, then, then I, when I confess Christ to be the son of the living God, I need to be buried with him in the watery grave of baptism. I need to be buried. I'm put in to Christ, according to Galatians 3, 26 and 27. I rise to walk a new creature in Christ because according to 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 and 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Everything has become new. 
You may have fallen down this morning. You may have fallen down last night. You may have fallen down last week. But God says, guess what? Here I come. Here I come. I'm coming. You don't have to be afraid, but all you got to do is say, Lord, just bid me to come. When you say bid me to come, you're saying, in other words, Lord, put the devil out of the way and let me focus only on you. Because we say if we resist the devil, he will flee from us. But that doesn't mean that he will stay away from us. He'll flee for a moment, but he'll return. So all that tells us is that we have to go while we have the Lord clearly in focus. And today is the day of salvation. We need to respond to the Lord now and ask ourselves, what am I afraid of? And say, whatever I was afraid of, I'm going to turn it over to God. If you hear you're not a member, you need to come because the Lord wants you to be saved today. If you hear you're a member and you've fallen short, Peter fell too. He started to sink. But he cried out, Lord, save me. You can come crying out today, today, and ask for what you need. If you hear you say, I need prayer, but I don't want nobody to know I need prayer. That's a sick person. The, the, the devil really has you sick if you say you don't need prayer. Everybody needs prayer. From the pulpit to the pew, everybody needs prayer. Well, I don't need prayer. No, you need prayer more than you know it. That's why you're saying you don't need prayer. But what I love about God, he said, whatever your need is, he's able to meet it. Doesn't matter whether you're going down or something. Doesn't matter whether you're standing on top of something. Doesn't matter whether you're leaning on something. Doesn't matter whether you're holding on to something. He's able to meet all of our needs. So I'm saying unto today, you want to be baptized, come forward. If you need to confess your sins and have to get it right with God, come forward. If you need prayer, whatever you need, this is the house of God. Get what you need here. And we're going to stand and sing a song of invitation for anybody and everybody who needs you to come. Yield not to temptation. Say don't yield. Say don't yield. For Yielding is a sin. Is and the devil don't want you to get close to God because he knows you're dangerous when you get close to God. Each victory every victory, every victory will help you. Every victory will help you. Some Another victory to win. win. Y'all know why Peter could rest you in the prison. Good afternoon, church. We come to another part of the worship service which is the offering. We take the scripture reading, 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, chapter 9, verses 6 through 8. Once again, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 8, and it reads, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Shall we pray? Father God, we just once again humble ourselves upon your mighty throne, giving you the praise, honor, and glory, Father. Father, we thank you for all your many, many blessings, Father, for the ones that we can see, Father, and even especially, Father, for those that we cannot even see, Father. We know that you are in the blessing business, Father. Father, we thank you for our clothes, our food, our shelter, our jobs, our cars, our 401ks, Father, everything that you bless us with, Father. And, Father, even if we don't have these things, Father, we thank you for the things we don't have, Father. So, Father, we just give you thanks, Father, and we just uh, thank you for the opportunity at this time to give back just a portion of what you have blessed us with, Father. And we just pray and ask that you take it, Father, bless it, and multiply it many, many times, Father, for the upkeep of your kingdom. This is our prayer, and we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. If you have Moves us to the next portion of worship, that is that of communion. The example is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning on about verse 23. And it reads, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. <clears throat> this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup, 
when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whoever, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Has everyone been served? Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this cup and this bread symbolizing your broken body and your blood. May all within the sound of my voice take such in a pure man of heart and mind. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. There's the body. Then the blood. Was anyone overlooked? If not, that concludes this word of worship. Father God, we just say thank you for once again for letting us hear another word. We worship you, Father God, in spirit and in truth. What a mighty, powerful word that we heard, Father God. We ask that you protect us as we leave this place, but never from your sight. Keep us safe from any hurt, harm, or danger as we go home. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. When we reach that city of the new Jerusalem, oh, we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. And how the ransom singers will together lift that hymn, oh, we're going to sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, by and by. We're singing, oh, what joy when we get home yes we're gonna rest beneath that cloudless dawn and in that land where saints never die oh we're gonna sing hallelujah sing hallelujah by and by